Don Bluth is most known for his animated films in the 1980s and 90s. Boss, they feed it! Monster? Yeah, monsters! I said monsters! Monster? But before that, he worked for Disney and Filmation and then Disney again. At some point during the 70s, Don Bluth and his friends Gary Goldman and John Pomeroy felt the industry was slipping and didn't know how long their time at Disney would last. They all had similar love for older Disney animated style and storytelling and really wanted to learn how to break out on their own. So, the first project they set out to work on is Banjo the Woodpile Cat, which they literally made in Don Bluth's garage. And this would be a learning experience for all of them, to learn things they would never learn working at Disney, and Banjo would become a portfolio for Don and friends when they went to try to make Secret of Nim, and everything they learned from Banjo would go into that film. Banjo the Woodpile Cat is a short animated film. It starts with Banjo living life on the farm with his parents and two sisters who all live in a woodpile and like the song says, Banjo is the cat who could not behave. Always getting in trouble and mostly upsetting his father who demands Banjo to get the switch that will be used to spank him. And Banjo gets kind of dramatic about it. It really seriously hurt, and no one would even care. And decides this is no fun, and runs away to Salt Lake City. The movie seems to take place in the 1940s. Banjo thinks it's exciting at first, but quickly finds trouble as he just can't seem to stay out of mischief. This leads Banjo out in the rain, feeling homesick. That's when he meets another cat called Crazy Legs, who feels like he could be from the Aristocats. You ran away from home? <laughs> the two of them quickly become friends, and Crazy Legs offers to help him find the truck that would take Banjo back home. The two of them head off but have no luck and end up at a nightclub with three cat singers, Cleo, Melina, and Zazu, who are friends of Crazy Legs. They sing a few songs, and they're not that bad there's not any other reason for this scene except for the fact that they end up at the singing cat's home later in the film after being chased by a pack of dogs. <laughs> the two of them stay the night and the next morning Banjo hears the truck. They all say their goodbyes and Banjo heads home to his family and the movie ending with Banjo reuniting with his family. Banjo the Woodpile Cat is a great looking film, especially since it was made in Don Blue's garage. I think it lacks those dark emotional elements that the three of them set out to do and eventually would do in Secret of Nim. <laughs> There's not much to the storyline and the character growth that you're used to in other Don Bluth films. But I feel the film was a learning experience for the friends and it's not a bad place to start. The story is just simple, but the animation looks great and the backgrounds look good. Without this stepping stone, there is no other Don Bluth classics and this was made in a garage in a day they didn't use computers. They had to make it the hard way, and I really admire the skills and passion it takes to make a film with the limited resources they had back then. 
And being a big Don Bluth fan, and this being his first go on his own, Banjo the Woodpile Cat holds a special place for me, as I see Don Bluth as an animated genius, and I can't imagine my childhood without his classic films. People used to ask me as I was growing up, I said, Don, what's a grown man going to do drawing cartoons? For heaven's sakes, isn't that silly? And I said, what would you have me do? Would you have me be a dentist? A school teacher? I said, well, I am a teacher. That's what I do when I make films. Okay. 